Here come the cattle. You and your brother Harry run that bunch down the creek and up in the canyon. Run their brands the first thing in the morning and then stick around until you hear from me. All right, Farley. Leave it to us. Come on, Harry. These are the tracks of your cattle, Mr. Barnes. Hmm. Fresh, too. I guess you're right, Tom. We ought to follow them. my cattle. I'm not so sure. Let's see. No cracks here. Only one of the two ways they could have taken the cattle. Up or downstream. Well, I know they didn't fly away. And I'm getting sick and tired of losing my cattle. Something's got to be done about it. Now, don't worry, Mr. Barnes. We'll do plenty as soon as we get a clue to the crooks. Well, I hope it'll be soon. 
Aren't you coming along to help us trail some more? No. I've got a meeting with the committee, Farley and the rest. About what, if I'm not too inquisitive? Well, to be truthful with you, it's about you. Me? Yes. Uh, we want to decide whether we were right in electing you sheriff. Meaning just what? Well, Tom, uh, since you've been elected sheriff, things have been going from bad to worse. So Farley thought he'd better call a meeting. Well, I... well good luck, Tom. Andy, does Farley mean anything to you? Nothing to me, Tom. Me either. All right, boys, let's ride downstream to Silent Valley. I've got a hunch. All right. coming, Clem. Not quite hot yet. Take a minute or two. Uh -huh. I don't like working around here in the daytime. I wish we were through. Oh, keep your shirt on, kid. Nobody ever found this hideout. Just the same, I don't like it. What if Tom Hall would ride up on us? I'd be sunk. What do you mean, that straight-laced four-flusher? Not in a million years. Suppose he is straight-laced. He's no four-flusher, and he's my friend. You get that? Your friend. On the count of you sparking your sister, huh? Shut your mouth, or I'll shut it for you. Now, kid, don't go to flying off your handle. Me and you's not going to tangle over your friend. Well, you just be careful what you're saying, that's all. <laughs> How about it, Clem? Coming right up. <laughs> Wait a minute, boys. This looks kind of phony here. Come on, boys. Get up, boys. Hey, beat it! The sheriff's coming. I just plugged one of his deputies. Can't tell how badly he's hurt. Get him to town as quick as you can. Right.
Oh, Fred! Oh, Fred! Where are you? Over here, Tom. In the shower. Well, hello, Tom. How are you? Fine, Fred. Just taking your shower? Yeah. Yeah, I got up kind of late this morning. I haven't had breakfast yet. Uh, where's Helen? Well, I don't know. Uh, sis was gone when I got up. Maybe she's back again. Did she ride your horse? My horse? What do you mean? I see a horse out there. He's kind of winded and wet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess she did. She often does. She's probably in the house by now, primping up after a morning ride. Well, I'll go back and see if she's through primping up by this time. Yeah. You do that, Tom. I'll see you later. Tom, what brings you here so early? Oh, nothing in particular. Just in line of duty. I was chasing some cattle thieves. Cattle thieves? Yeah, they went by here, but I lost them, so I dropped in to see how you were. Oh, I'm glad you did, Tom. Won't you come in the house? Well, I really can't, Helen. I haven't got much time, but listen, Helen. I want you to do something for me, will you? Oh, sure I will, Tom. Well, I... I hate to say it, but... I think Fred is traveling in bad company. What do you mean, bad company? It's a bunch of fellows, I suspect, of all the cattle rustling around here. Who are they? Well, I can't tell anyone until I get them dead to rights. Then you're just guessing. Well, you may call it that. But when I'm sure, it'll be too late for Fred. Well, I'm sure you're wrong about Fred. But there's one thing. If he's traveling in bad company, so am I. Goodbye. Hello, Farley. How's Trick? Well, of all things, Pete Childers. How come you're blowing in here? Have a drink. Sure. How come you're blowing in here? Just hiding out for a spell. Trouble? Yeah. Bumped the guy off below the border. Real rallies are after her. I see. Still a little fast on the trigger. Yeah, sometimes. How long do you expect to stick around, Pete? I don't know. I want you to do something for me. Sure. What is it? I need some money. Willing to work for it? Sure. Clean or dirty? That all depends on how you look at it. I think I can find a place for you. That'll be fine. I got a meeting on in a few minutes. Make yourself at home. By the way, Pete, what's your name now? Just call me Pete uh, Peterson. All right, Pete. Stick around a while. I'm going to need you right soon. 
Hello, Barnes. Oh, hi, Polly. Hi, Bledsoe. Howdy. I see you're on time. Step in my office a minute. Come on in, Jack. Have a seat. Have a drink. My own private stock. Well, gents, I guess you have an idea why I call this meeting. I think we have. John and me here are the biggest sufferers on account of them honorary cattle thieves. Yes, and if we had a real sheriff, you fellows wouldn't be losing your cattle. Now... Howdy, Sheriff. Hello, Jerry. Where's Harley? In the office. Tom Hall ain't the sheriff we expected him to be. He hasn't produced any results yet, and it's about time that he should. Come in. Well, gentlemen, sit down, Tom. We're just talking about you. You know, when we elected you sheriff, we thought you'd get rid of this bunch of crooks who've been stealing our cattle. So I suppose you want me to resign or something, just because I haven't caught your cattle thieves. Now, don't fly off the handle, Tom. All we want on your part is a little action. Well, I just had some action. And poor Andy got shot. What? what? When you left us at the creek, I told you I had a hunch. Well, we went downstream. Tom's with him and Barnes and Bledsoe. Uh huh. Well, give us a couple of beers. All right. And he's badly hurt. I left him at the doctor's. He's still unconscious. If he ever pulls through, he'll be able to tell me who shot him. And that's sure tough on poor Andy. I hope he pulls through. What are you going to do about another deputy in his place? I don't know. I guess I'll have a hard time getting a man. Most of them are scared of this gang wrestlers around here, whoever they are. I think I got the man for you, and you better hire him. I think Polly's right. All right. Do I know him? Don't think you do. You're a stranger in these parts. Friend of yours? Not exactly. I knew him by reputation up north. He's in the bar room now. Suppose we go in and size him up. Hey, Peterson. Gents, this is Pete Peterson from Powder River, Wyoming. Gents. Pete here was sheriff of Powder River for two years. Well, uh, not exactly sheriff, uh, town marshal. How would you like to be my deputy? Why, I wouldn't mind. How good is your shooting arm? How quick are you on the draw? Well, is that all right? Can you tie it? Pretty good shooting, I call it. But pretty hard on the liquor. Well, I guess that ties it. Well, what do you say? All right, Pete. Let's go to my office and get your badge. Out of his coma. He wants to tell you something. The doctor says you better hurry up. Well, because 
Is he that bad? Come with George and me. I want witnesses. That fellow Peterson looks like a good bet. Yeah, he's afraid of nothing. And he's a straight shooter. Not that Tom isn't better or as good with a gun. But Tom uh, doesn't shoot often enough. What do you mean? I mean if he'd shoot up a couple of those suspects, the same as they shot up Andy, that'd put the fear of the law on that gang. But Tom's a little too careful. Yeah. Tom's too straight legs. Now, this fellow Peterson's an outsider, and that helps. He ain't got any friends to protect. What do you mean, oh, friends to protect? I don't mean what you're thinking. But Tom was born and raised here. Knows everybody in town. Naturally, if he suspected any of the fellows, he'd wait until he was sure. Well, I guess you're right, Polly. We'll be going. Go on. Hey, boys. Come on the office a minute. Well, what happened? Well, Tom and his deputies got into our canyon in Silent Valley, and I had to plug Andy. I know all about that, but I didn't know it was you that did the damage to Andy. Well, he was the closest to me, and I was standing watch, so... Well, don't worry. You're working for me, ain't you? That's so, boss. I ain't worrying. What's the matter, kid? What are you nervous about? Polly, I'm not working for you any longer. One little vacation? A few days off? No. It isn't that. I'm just quitting for good. What's biting you? Well... I didn't realize when I first started working for you, driving my truck, how deep I'd get in with a gang. And I guess I just don't want to be a crook, that's all. Turn straight, eh? Yell. No, it's on account of my sister. I don't want to get her into trouble. Maybe it's because Tom Allen is a little sweet on your sister. That's got nothing to do with it. Well, watch your kick then. I, I just don't like being crooked. I guess that's what's worrying me. Well, you listen to me and I'll give you something to worry about. You're sticking with a gang for good. And that goes. And if I don't, then what? Plenty. For the money that you owe me through gambling, I can gobble up your ranch any day. For what I got on you since you've been working for me, I can send you up for a stretch. You've got nothing on me. No? Why, your pasture's full of stolen cattle. But you can't prove anything against me without getting yourself in a jam. Well, there's a couple of guys in the penitentiary right now, and they thought they could get me in a jam. Am I right, Harry? Don't be a fool, Fred. It ain't what kind of a jam Farley can get you in. It's what he can get you out of. Now you're talking, Harry. I always take care of my boys, don't I? Sure do. That's all right, kid. We all get nervous once in a while. But don't worry. I'm your friend. Just buck up and do what I tell you and you won't lose anything. You just hang out at Fred's ranch for a while until this shooting business blows over. Get me? Yeah. Don't get stampeded, kid. You just take care of Harry at your ranch for a spell and keep your trap shut tight. All right, boss. matter with you? Something on your mind? Yeah, plenty. I know this fellow Pete Childers. Yeah? What about it? Pretty slick of you getting Tom to hire Pete as one of his deputies. Good man, isn't he? Sure. Worst killer in seven states. What of it? I'm going to declare myself in with you. So you're going to declare yourself in with me, eh? 
On what? Your racket. 50-50, I suppose. Sure, 50-50. And my brother Bill is going to sell the beef at his butcher shop just the same as before. It's all right by me. Anything else? No, I guess that's all. And suppose I don't cut you in. What then? Well, in that case, I'll bust your racket wide open. And maybe collect the reward for turning in your friend Pete. <laughs> I guess you would at that. All right, don't worry. We're partners from now on. I want you to do something for me. What's that? Don't tell anybody about this new partnership of ours. Not even your own brother. You understand? Mum's a word. All right, pard. You better beat it up to Fred's ranch and lay low. I'll see you soon. You bet. Private stock. Have you seen Harry Keller around? Yeah, just left here a minute ago. Funny you didn't see him. Something wrong? Yes, dead wrong. And he just died. He swore Harry was the man who shot him. So I've got to take him in. Poor Andy. Did he identify any of the rest of the gang? No, only saw Harry. Any idea which way he went? Wait a minute. I think he said something about going over to visit Fred at the Jones Ranch. All right, boys. Let's see if he's there. Harry? Clean or dirty? What do you think? He's in there washing up. He'll be in in a minute. Well, I've got lunch nearly ready. Fred, what's the trouble? Oh, nothing, sis. Did you see Tom in town? Yes. Talk to him? No. no. Now, Fred, I don't want you to get sore, but Tom and I had a quarrel this morning. What about? About you. He said you were traveling in bad company. Oh, is that so? Yes. I said I didn't believe him, though. Well, the nerve of him. Where does he get that stuff, anyway? Oh, I don't know, but I guess he's all upset about the cattle stealing that's going on. Hello, folks. Well, here I am, spick and span and hungry as a hound. Well, I'll have lunch ready for you in a minute. Fine. It's Tom with a posse. He's got that killer Pete Childers with him. All right, boys, surround the house and wait for my signal. I'm telling you, he's the worst killer in seven states. And Tom hired him as a deputy, knowing that? Sure, he must have. Hey, Fred! Yes, what do you want? Is Harry Keller in the house? Well, what do you want to know for? Andy Mack's dead. He said Harry shot him, so I got to take him in. 
Yeah, but uh, uh, Harry isn't here. All right, I'll give you two minutes to find him. Stick to me, kid, will you? What's this all about? Well, Tom and the posse have come to take Harry. They claim that he killed Andy Mack, but it isn't so. You bet it isn't. I'll show them they can get me. Wait a minute, Harry. There's too many of them. You haven't got a chance against that gang. Well, why don't you go out and prove to them you're innocent? Oh, Tom wouldn't believe what I say. All right, Fred. Time's up. How about Harry? Haven't found him yet. Then you and Helen better come out. What for? Because we'll have to shoot up the house until we get Harry. Please, Harry, give yourself up. I know Tom will give you a square deal. Sis is right. You haven't got a chance against that gang if you stay in here. I'll stick. You two go on out. I'm not going to have you get in trouble on my account. But listen, Harry. Nothing doing. Now, you two have been mighty decent to me. Now beat it. All right, here. Quick, this way. All right, Harry, this is your last chance. Come on out with your hands in the air. If you want me, come and get me. All right, Tom. I'm coming out. All right. Come on out. And put your hands in the air. Did you shoot him? Yeah. Gun kind of went off accidental like. Pretty good shooting from 50 yards, huh? Pretty good and pretty yellow. Get going. And as for you, I'll give a last warning. Quit that gang. What gang? You know. How dare you telling my brother he's running with the gang? Now listen, Helen, let's not quarrel. I'll be back this afternoon and explain everything. You needn't bother. I won't be home if I see you coming. Oh, that's... 
front row. How much you got in that load? I got two bees cut in quarters with the hides on. I got Harry. Which Harry? Your brother. Who got him? Well, uh, Tom came to take Harry in. That new deputy, Pete Peterson, killed him. Who's Pete Peterson? Well, Harry said he was a well-known killer. Do you mean to tell me that Tom knew the man was a killer and then hired him anyway? Well, I guess so. I'm not sure. Then I'll get that bullet. It's the last thing I do. Wait a minute. Tom hired him, didn't he? What do you mean? Maybe the man did just what Tom told him to do. Well, then I'll get Tom for it. You'll do nothing of the kind. You'll keep on driving that butcher's wagon like you've been doing. And leave Tom to us. What are you going to do? We'll take care of Tom. Don't worry. All right, I guess you will. Hey, kid, where are you going? Well, uh, down to the ranch. Uh, I've got to see my sis about something. All right, but don't be late at Pine Gulf. I'll be there. Hey, Kirby. Kid's getting soft. You better follow him and see what he's up to. Is Tom coming here this afternoon? He said he was, but I told him I wouldn't be here. Listen, sis, you've got to warn him. I don't know any reason why. Well, uh, a gang's gunning for him, and we've just got to let him know. Then Tom was right. You are in with the gang. Yes, but I'm through with him, and I want you to warn Tom as soon as he comes here. I've got to ride back to Pine Gulf's cabin, where we're to meet. Tell Tom everything I said, and to be sure and bring a bunch of men with him to the cabin. Don't let him come alone. How many? Give me two. And two for me. Shh. I think he's coming. Trying to double cross you. Herbie Follister. We got your number. Take him inside, boys.
What do you know about that? Nothing. I just bought some meat from Fred. Yeah? Well, I know this is Barnes beef. Well, the brand changed. I don't know anything about it. Well, get on the wagon. We're going back to the ranch. Here, miss. Here's a note from Mr. Farley. What happened? Mr. Farley and me found him. We were riding fence. But they fell off this horse. We took him to one of our line shacks. Take me to him at once. We'll use my buggy.
Isn't that the old shack in Pine Gulch? The folly calls it line shack? Yes. There's something wrong about this note. After what Bill told me. Bill? Bill came clean on the way here about Farley and his gang. You did, huh? You take the wagon with the prisoner to town and come to Pine Gulch with a bunch of men. Now that we got Fred and Helen so they won't blab, we'll fix up a nice little surprise party for Mr. Tom Hall tonight. Business, you. Why, it's the sheriff himself. Can you beat it? We're sure in luck. I'll wait outside. Reach for the ceiling. Drop that gun. What are you doing here? What's the idea? The idea is that I want you to write out your resignation and make me sheriff. All right, Pete. You win this time. the idea. You'll be sorry for this. Never mind the grandstand plague. Bill spilled the beans on you. And I'm sure Fred and Pete are willing to talk. Well, how about Fred? How deep is he in this? Deep enough, I guess. But I'm willing to take my medicine. 
I think he's cured. But to make sure, I'll parole him to myself for about a year or so. I suppose he wouldn't mind being paroled to his brother-in-law. Would you, Fred? I should say not, Helen. <laughs> Thank you.